Hello everyone and welcome to another DIY engineers video. In this video we're going over the LDR and how to use it with an Arduino. Also we're going over the sensor pins, the sensor circuit, overview of the output of the sensor, the sensor circuit with the Arduino and built in for the darkness sensor, as well as how to program it in Arduino. So let's get started. Now the LDR can be used in two configurations. One is the simple standalone LDR in which all we have is the LDR with the two legs or the two terminals, which is no different than a resistor with the only difference that this resistor changes its value or resistance based on the amount of line hitting the LDR. We also have the module, which is what's shown on the right, which has the LDR component built in to a card or printed circuit board, which also has a resistor built into it and then the three pins for ease of use. Now, the three pins are signal or let's call it VP as voltage probe, which is where we take our main value or reading. And then we have VCC and ground for us to provide the positive negative voltage to power the sensor. Now, here I'm showing some images so you can see the resistance across the LDR. So when we are applying a lot of light or some light, we'll see a, a relatively low value. But as we start to decrease that brightness, as we go, you see from left to right and then onto the next row, you can see how that resistance measured in the multimeter is increasing. We start about 10 kilo ohms and then we still have some light but it's slightly darker and we're still at 100 kilo ohms. If you were to completely shut down the lights it could go as high as 1000 kilo ohms. Now let's go over the circuit for the LDR. As we've shown before in the module we have the three pins signal which I'm going to choose to label VP because that's where we have the so-called voltage probe and then we have VCC and ground which is where we you know ground it and also VCC where we power it up. So here we can see that we have a resistor between VP and ground. And this is the LDR. This is the actual light dependent resistor. And we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor between the VP or signal and VCC. Now, in this case, if we do a simple equation to determine the voltage VP relative to ground, we find that the current flowing through the LDR multiplied by the actual resistance of the LDR will give us voltage VP. We can move the resistance to the other side of the equation and we get that the current flowing through it is equal to the VP voltage divided by the resistance of the LDR. Now, if we measure the voltage VCC relative to ground, we can also determine the equation equals, you know, the current flowing through both the 10K resistor and the LDR. We can rearrange this one as well. And we'll get VCC divided by the two resistances in the denominator, um, give us the same current. If we take these two, we can then set the left hand side of both equations equal to each other. And then we can rearrange that to get that VP equals the resistance for the LDR divided by 10 kilo ohms plus the resistance of the LDR multiplied by whatever we put in VCC. Now, the equation we obtained of VP versus LDR with VCC allows us to generate the chart shown in the bottom left of the screen. That chart shows VP plotted against the resistance of LDR. We can see that VP increases pretty rapidly with small changes at the beginning of our LDR. Specifically, we can see that we're only right up around 50 kilo ohms and we're already past, you know, 4 volts, meaning that the rest of the range from 50 kilo ohms all the way to you know a thousand kilo ohms it will be generate a value of VP somewhere between 4 and 5 volts. This is pretty important to understand because if you remember from the pictures we showed before we were around 40 and it was still kinda not dark specifically and that what that means is that for that value we were already be near 4 volts uh, and anything darker than that will still be between 4 and 5, which is not necessarily helpful. So we can see here we had 44.9 kilo ohms, which means that a range between that point and, you know, full darkness will be anywhere between 4 and 5 volts, which doesn't let us, you know, doesn't allow us to do much from a signal analysis standpoint. What we would want is that when it's bright, we get a voltage that is much different than when it's dark. So what we need to do is modify the circuit to provide a smoother curve. And I'll show you how to do that in the example coming up next. In a previous video, I showed you how to use an NPN transistor to turn on a bright LED through the push of a button. 
I'll now show you how to do this with an LDR instead of a push button. Now if you recall, this is the circuit that we described for the LDR. Now, to smoothen the curve and to implement the transistor that we talked about to turn on the flash, we got a transition to the circuit. Now in this circuit I have the Arduino Uno, we have the LDR module with the built-in 10 kilo ohm resistor, we have the NPN2 and 2222 transistor, we have the LED flash that we talked about, we also have an added 220 kilo ohm resistor in series with the LDR and the 10K, and we also have a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor going to the digital output. So let's walk through it. We can see that we have D6, digital output number 6 in the Arduino Uno, which we can turn on. And when we do, we're going to have flow of current through this resistor to the base of the transistor. And when we do that, as long as the voltage is high, which will be because we're turning it on, flow of current will allow to flow through this transistor. It will be amplified and the flash will turn on. Now, the reason for adding this resistance here is when this is 5 volts, we're going to regulate the current by adding the specific resistance. So the current will be equal to V over R, which is 5 volts divided by 4.7 kilo ohm. That current will then be amplified through here, as I mentioned, based on that's the main function of the transistor. Now, when will that happen? Well, we're using an Arduino so we can program the condition, but we talked about the voltage that we're going to have at the output or signal VP of the LDR module. That will be coming out of here into A0 as an analog input, and we can define at which analog value, you know, anywhere from 0 to 10,023, at which number do we want it to trigger. The reason for adding this 220 kilo ohm resistance is to smoothen that curve that we looked at before. It was very sharp going up and then pretty much horizontal almost, and we want to smoothen the curve through the use of the 220 kilo ohm resistor such that the gradual input, or the input, sorry, from the analog input is much more gradual. That way, as it starts to get darker, that voltage starts to increase more slowly rather than shooting straight up. So, once we define the value at which we want to take action, we will take readings on this analog input, and then, you know, as I said, we will turn this on and send current here, and then this will essentially allow flow of current. So as I mentioned, we're going to be smoothing the curve by adding that 220 kilo ohm resistor. We can see the difference. So for example, let's say we think we want to turn on the LED when it's 100 kilo ohms of resistance. And we looked at how dark that is before. I'm going to show it here on the screen. So if we wanted to turn it on there, it's a lot easier to control it with this smoother curve or more gradual growth versus this one on the blue one, which goes straight up. And I mean, you're pretty much already at 4.5 volts. It's a lot easier to control it here because you could be slightly to the left and you're almost still at that same value. Here you're going to have less error. Now, as we talked before, when the resistance on the LDR is low, which is associated with having a lot of brightness in the room, or at least the brightness that the LDR is seeing, we know that this voltage is going to be low. And when it's low, we're going to trigger this to stay low, which means the flash will be off, as shown in this picture. Now, when the LDR resistance is high, this voltage here will be high, and we will trigger this to go into high or high or five volts, which will trigger full of current here. It will get amplified and we're going to have the flash turn on. Now we looked at the circuit, but now let's talk through the breadboard diagram. Let's start here. We have the digital input slash output number six. We're going to use it as an output. And we have this green cable go into the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor as we talked about, and then going into the base of the transistor. We also have this loop with the 12 volts positive looping through the LED flash, going into the transistor collector, exiting at the emitter and going to ground. We have the 12 volts feeding the Arduino Uno in the V input. We have ground connected to this ground, but also connected to ground on the, on the 12 volt, that where they're both on common ground. We have this feeding 5 volts to this main rail, which then goes into this 220 kilo ohm resistor, which goes through VCC on the module, which then here goes to ground connected to ground here. And then remember, this is where the 10 kilo ohm was internally. It was within this module. If you had it as a separate component, you, you would have to adjust your breadboard setup. And then here in signal, which is really our VP point, we go here and we go straight to the analog input number zero. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino code for this example. So first we go ahead and define the digital output to be used to trigger the transistor. This will be LED, and we'll set it to six, since it's IO number six. We'll also define LDR for the analog pin for the Arduino LDR signal, VP, that we talked about before. We'll set this to analog number zero, so A0. Now, we're gonna go ahead and under setup, we'll define the pin associated with LED, which was six, as an output, and then we'll go into the main loop. In the main loop, we will define an integer called LDR underscore VP as the analog read from LDR, meaning this will be the value associated with the reading through analog input 
number zero. Then we'll go through a logic which says that if that rating is greater than 490, we're gonna go ahead and turn the LED on. So we're gonna set it to high. Otherwise, we'll set it to low. What, are, what this means is that if VP rating is greater than 490, we'll turn it on, otherwise off. So this is our main trigger or our main uh, threshold defining whether or not the flash will turn on based on how dark it is. Now, why 490? Well, 490 essentially represents a value in the curve that is kind of close to 200 kilo ohms. Now, why 200 kilo ohms? Well, we saw earlier the picture of how dark it was at 100 kilo ohms, and I thought that wasn't dark enough. So I went with 200. Now, at 200, if we look at the curve with the smooth and action based on the 220 kilo ohm, we can see that the voltage is roughly 2.4 volts. That can also be taken or calculated using this equation. So at 2.4 volts, what is the analog input reading that corresponds to 2.4 volts? Well, all we got to do is divide 2.4 volts by 5 volts and then multiply in times 1023. In this case, the result will be 491. I rather and decided to go with 490, which was a better, more rounded number. So that's how it got there. If you want the light to turn on when it's much darker, you simply need to go ahead and increase this number. If you want it to turn on when it's still brighter, reduce this number. And that's it. Now, if you want to go ahead and use this code, the easiest way is to go ahead and head out to DIYengineers.com and go to the blog post associated with this video, which I'll leave in the description. So simply go there, go to the section with the Arduino code, and all you got to do is copy, select it, copy, and then just paste it on your Arduino ID. Now we're back at the code and all we got to do is run the code. So let's click here, upload, and we're done. Let's go ahead and test it. So here we are. Now we're ready to start the test. Simply, we're going to go ahead and turn the lights on and off and you will see how the flash will go on anytime we turn off the lights. So there you see it. Turn it off, you see the flash on, lights on, no flash, and so on. All right, guys, so this is the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you very much, and see you in the next one. Bye.